Hi, it's me. I'm back. Okay, we're back on the subject of organic. What is organic? And so now we've gone through the definitions. We have an idea of what we've been really saying when we say organic and the impact that saying organic has out in the political world as well as the farming world. What do we do about this problem with organic? How the governments, how the agencies and the powers that be, um, had they they've taken control of that and they've made being an organic farmer a disadvantage somehow out there on the world stage. Well, you know, what I would suggest is this. Um, not that I'm going to change the world here, but it doesn't hurt for us to try out different ideas, all right? What I'm thinking is this. You change the name of organic. we got to get rid of that. It's, that's not doing anybody any good right now, the way it's being used and abused. Let's change it to a term like nature compatible. Let's say you're growing, you're a nature compatible farmer. Uh, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a mouthy thing to say, but uh, let's, let's put that label on the food that you produce organically so that it can go to the market and you can, you can hang your shingle there that doesn't require anyone's certification Nobody's stamp of approval. It's just you saying I'm not using chemicals. I'm actually doing this organic But I'm not paying charge who works in the government and wants to uh, you know kill my operation Because I'm trying to do something natural and good for the world You hang your shingle whatever market that you are in the supermarket farmers market you name it and it's just nature compatible and then you put it on social media. This is a way to break the bank. This is the way to break the back of the globalized club. All right. Get it on social media and have everybody review your nature compatibility. Only those people come out to your farm and take a look at how things are done get a chance to review you. So let's say we set up a system here. Five star system is good enough. If somebody says, if somebody sees that you're doing everything completely okay, they can take videos of it to, to ver as verification for you. Social verification, very important. They can give you the five stars, talk blah blah, have videos that back up what you are claiming because they're claiming it now also. Get people to be your allies. And then you go out in the market, you go in the supermarket. And you've got this section called nature compatible. There's there's a freezer, there's shelves. There are all these products that are now being stocked by you, your farms, your types of farms, and you can compete among your own people, your own uh, uh, fellow farmers uh, for attention on your food products. And all of that chemical food can easily be left in the dust now. This has to be a supermarket that's not afraid of the club. This has to be done in markets that are actually against the club or they're actually seeing that the club is a problem. Therefore, that's why they formed as markets, like most of the farmers markets out there. They are alternatives uh, to the hor horrible stuff that's going on in supermarkets. But let's say that you do get a supermarket to sort of go for this idea as a, as a sort of a trial. And let's say that they do get away with it. Now, uh, we have to be online, we have to be on social media, we have to be talking with each other. Someone has to stand out there in the supermarket and actually staff the food, actually talk to people and say, hey, this is just organic, we're not allowed to say it, okay. And then people will slowly warm up to you. They will, a lot of people won't have to slowly warm up. And here's another factor. There's actually only two factors I got to bring up here. The rest is up to you and, and your, your business finesse. The second factor you have got to put in place is be competitive. You know, I, I know we got pink mush ball tomatoes out there and crap tasting stuff that doesn't have any flavor and it mushes out quite early and it's, it's cheap. And this is what we buy because this is what most of us can afford. You're going to have to be as cheap. Yeah, I know this is damn near impossible. Find a way. This is time for you to be ingenious. It's time for you to apply 
your your fancy college boy and college girl knowledge or whatever you've got or generations before you um, of economic uh, smartness put into the farm. You have to put that into use and get innovative and get those prices down to where you are competing evenly with the chemical farming. This is the only way we're going to get away with it, folks. It's the only way we're going to get rid of these guys. Okay. We have to show we are not dependent. We have to show that chemical farming, chemical business, chemical life, chemical medicine, chemical whatever you want to call it, chemical facets of life are no longer relevant. They become irrelevant. We have to show that by just quietly and peacefully doing a different way that's not tied to them and we don't break any laws. We just creatively get out there and start new markets. Believe me, people are ready for this. We are all of us sick and tired of this bullshit, of this game that's being played that we're quietly going along with because there's nothing else we can do. Most of us can't afford the organic farm food. Okay? So, that's the message I've got for, for this part of it, is to change the label, change the term, go out there, create your own market, elbow in, in that supermarket next to the existing chemical market, elbow it out eventually, make it all irrelevant. Again, my name is M. This is Simple Life. Thanks for listening.